Fitch, the chief of police for St. Louis County. And chief, you were in the news a little bit this week um, because you said uh, what maybe a lot of people were thinking, but you came out and said, uh, maybe it is time to talk about as a last resort, arming our teachers or our, uh, or the, the, um, the, the principal or whomever in the school. First, before we, we, we've got a lot we wanna talk to you about, but first let's talk about that for a second. Um, explain what you're thinking there and, and what kind of response have you gotten from educators on that idea? Well, uh, it mixed response from educators. Uh, a lot of educators have caught me on the side and said, I know I wouldn't be allowed to say this publicly, but I think that's a great idea. I'm a teacher, I'm a gym teacher, I'm a whatever, I'm an administrator. Uh, I'd like to have that option available because if somebody came into my school, and everything we're talking about right now that you've been talking about, all is about how to prevent mm -hmm. this kind of activity. Mm -hmm. What I've been talking about is now you've got it in your school, what do we do about it? So uh, that's a critical time period because what you have is from the time the person enters the school, they're in, none of the counseling has helped, they're in, they've got the gun, they're starting to shoot, and law enforcement's been notified. That gap, that critical gap is what I've been talking about all week. It's five minutes, it's 10 minutes, it depends on the local police department's response time. I'm comfortable when the police get there, they're gonna handle the problem. But what do you do in the meantime? And today we met with the educators and there were things like, well, let's, instead of guns, let's give our people tasers. Well, somebody said, let's put in a trap door so they could fall in a trap door. Like banks, let's get one of those doors that lock so they can't get out or get in. I mean, there were all those kind of well-meaning ideas, mm -hmm. but I have to deal in reality. And reality is, at the time that I'm talking about, kids are dying. So what do we do about that? So one of the options I threw out there as a last resort, mm -hmm. if you don't have law enforcement at the scene, is do we give qualified people with the right training the ability to protect themselves and the kids in the school to at least cut down on the number of deaths until law enforcement can arrive. Do you worry about all those days they'll be in the classroom or in the school where nothing happens and they're carrying a weapon on them? Well, that wasn't my idea to carry a weapon on them. It was to have it secured. For example, you know, you're the science teacher, you're a hunter, you, you go through this training. There are certain kinds of uh, devices where you can secure a firearm uh, we have them, you, you thumbprint to open it up, you know, things like that. But it's still readily available. It has to be readily available or it defeats the purpose. But it can't be so available that someone could steal it, for example. And by the way, those things happen. They steal guns out of police cars. I mean, that happens. But what you could do is give somebody a fighting chance instead of all those kids saying, guess what, we're going to hide under a desk and hope nothing bad happens, they don't find us. I don't like the hope method alternative. That's the part that I've been talking about. So what I've said to those that are absolutely against that idea, absolutely against anybody, even if they're qualified to have a firearm, is what's your plan when the shooting starts? And I haven't heard a good explanation yet. Throw books, throw chairs, I've heard all those type of things. That doesn't work when someone has an assault rifle. That's a conversation that's gonna continue, I'm sure. Uh, let's talk about um, before that happens and on a broader scale, how much, uh, people, people may not realize uh, how much your officers interact or how much of the, the work that your officers do involves mental health. Can, can you give us an idea on, on an on a average day how much your officers are interacting on, on, on a mental health level? Every day. Uh, years ago uh, funding was cut drastically and it continues to be cut for mental health services. So all of these individuals with these mental health problems are out on the street. Well who do you think has to deal with these people? We have to deal with them. They're sick individuals and they're off their medicine. Uh, and we get stuck dealing with these instead of having the professionals deal with them. So we're stuck dealing with these issues. And then where do we put them? In jail. Mentally ill people, unless it's criminally mentally ill, do not deserve to be in jail. And, but that, that's the only place that we know where to take them. So, so are your officers prepared for this in any way? Well, what we do, we have special officers. They're called CIT officers, Crisis Intervention Team. They receive an extra 40 hours of training to give them some extra tools on how to deal with mental health issues. So they have this training, they're actually seen when they go to these psychiatric centers, they're seen as fellow professionals by the experts there. They're able to get them checked in, explain what's going on with this individual, about the crisis, about any medicines that they're on, and then basically leave the individual, if they haven't committed a crime, with the facility. Will they see that individual again? Do you see it? Do you Absolutely. We have gotten to the point now where we've dealt with the same mentally ill individuals over and over, they'll call the station and they'll say, I want to talk to Officer Smith, he helped me last time. They'll actually call for the CIT officers. 
Real quickly, something called COPS. It, it, what would you like people to know about that program? Talk about the COPS in schools grants? Yes, yes. What we had was after Columbine, uh, the federal government said, we need to put more COPS in schools. So they had a grant program called COPS in Schools. Well, that funding ended in 2003. And a lot of school districts said, this is an important program. We want to keep it in our schools. So they started funding this. Well, a lot of school districts said, we don't have the money. So they let those officers go. They didn't want them in their schools anymore because they didn't have the funds. So what we're hoping will happen is Congress will say, we need to come up with the funding to reinstitute cops in schools.